joining me now to discuss more on the EV maker, these various lawsuits and everything happening also overseas. I'd like to welcome in Caroline Wood, senior markets correspondent for the network. So Caroline, what a day. And of course, there's no better day to discuss a name like Tesla. That's also seeing some selling. But I, I was looking actually at its intraday chart. We've recovered pretty substantially off lows here. Hey there, Jenny. Yes, yeah, like the major averages, like you were talking about, Tesla well off earlier lows, still down about three and a half percent. But uh, like the other Magnificent Seven numbers, uh, definitely in a bit better of a position they, than they were when the market first opened this morning. But quite a few headlines surrounding uh, Elon Musk, of course, the CEO of Tesla. The first being that uh, his lawsuit against OpenAI is back on in federal court. Musk alleges that he was manipulated into believing that uh, OpenAI um, or well, he was helping to launch an AI company, which became OpenAI with Sam Altman and Greg Brockman. And uh, he, he was uh, manipulated into believing it was a nonprofit. According to this complaint filed in the U.S. District Court in Northern California today, Sam Altman, now the CEO of OpenAI, allegedly courted and deceived Musk, promising him they would pursue a nonprofit venture together for the benefit of humanity. In turn, Musk invested tens of millions of dollars and recruited top AI scientists for the project. Um, Musk alleges that Altman abandoned their mission by entering a multi-billion dollar partnership with Microsoft. The complaint said Altman assured Musk that the nonprofit structure guaranteed neutrality and a focus on safety and openness for the benefit of humanity, not for shareholder value. But as it turns out, this was all hot air philanthropy, the hook for Altman's long con. So you may remember that Musk actually filed a similar lawsuit against OpenAI back in March, claiming that at the time, claiming that OpenAI had broken its founding agreement by giving priority to profits over humanity. But Musk withdrew that uh, complaint in June, just a day before a judge actually ruled if it would be dismissed or not. So at the time, OpenAI wrote a blog post, which included some emails from Musk as well, saying there is no founding agreement or any agreement at all with Musk. Musk claims uh, rest on convoluted, often incoherent, factual premises. So uh, the, the drama kind of <laughs> ensues, it continues. Obviously, uh, you know, Tesla shareholders don't necessarily like when Elon Musk's attention is focused on other things, but can't necessarily say that this uh, lawsuit is what's weighing on shares today. If you, because if you take a look, uh, the Magnificent Seven is all lower today as the AI trade kind of continues to unwind. And then if you take a look at some of the EV makers, with the exception of Rivian, which is higher today, uh, we're seeing weakness. Lucid is lower. The Chinese EV makers take a look. Neo, Xpeng, Li, BYD, uh, U.S. listed shares all trading lower today as well. GM and Ford also contributing to weakness today as well. Tesla continues to be one of the most argued about names on the street. I was just looking at the analyst breakdown. It always just blows my mind how evenly split it is. We know there's usually a little bit more bulls in general in the market, but this is about as even across the buy, hold, and sell as you can find. Yes, unlike the other Magnificent Seven stocks, which are all very, uh, you know, which skew very bullish in terms of the analyst breakdown, Tesla actually has more holds than buys right now. Uh, if you take a look, there's 40 percent of hold ratings and about 36 percent buy ratings. So uh, pretty even, as you said, but a little bit more uh, in terms of the hold cam. Given the fact that Tesla has come off uh, of its highs recently, now down 20 percent year to date, it's actually trading above or below the median price target of 217.50. But, uh, you know, still pretty close. It was trading above not too long ago. Uh, you know, in terms of other EV news, though, Alex and Jenny, that's, uh, that could potentially be weighing on shares, especially U uh, the U.S. listed shares of the Chinese companies, Reuters is reporting that the U.S. Commerce Department is considering banning Chinese software and autonomous and connected vehicles in the U.S. According to this Reuters report, the Biden administration plans to propose a rule that would prohibit Chinese software and vehicles in the U.S. with level three automation and above. So that would effectively also ban testing on U.S. roads of autonomous vehicles made by Chinese companies. Under the proposal, automakers and suppliers would need to verify that none of their connected vehicle or advanced autonomous vehicle software was developed in a foreign entity of concern, of course, like China. So we know that the U.S. has already sought to limit the entry of Chinese EVs into the U.S. by adding 100 percent tariffs. 
And then that clean energy bill makes it more difficult for automakers to use Chinese-made batteries. And so now this goes after, uh, or according to this report, it would go after the software component, uh, which could be weighing on shares of these Chinese-listed companies as well. And one other quick thing that I wanted to mention, bringing it back to Tesla, there was a, a podcast that Elon Musk was on over the weekend with Lex Friedman. It was a, part of an eight-hour podcast where he interviews multiple leaders. And uh, I listened to a little bit, but I have to give credit to Al Root over at Barron's, who uh, clearly listened a bit closer than I did. But he pointed out that Elon Musk actually gave some, some kind of positive commentary in, in terms of numbers for Tesla. He uh, said that uh, Tesla will generate sales of more than $100 billion this year. So Tesla generated about $47 billion in the first half of this year. So $100 billion or more than $100 billion would imply second half strength, a stronger second half than first half of the year, uh, also higher than 2023, which uh, amounted to about $97 billion. So that seems to be getting overshadowed by some of these other headlines today and also this uh, you know overall strength that we're seeing in the market but I do think that's important to point out as well. Okay, I totally do as well and I completely think that's been overshadowed. I mean, I, I could not agree more. I feel like hey, hey, I guess who knows if they'll hit that target as they've been one to make promises perhaps sometimes they can't always sure. fulfill as quickly as we'd hope, but that's still objectively a good piece of news. So we'll take that for what we will and appreciate you bringing that piece of information for us Caroline Woods, senior markets correspondent. As always appreciate all of the great Tesla insights.